Hello, I'm Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome to part four of our Making a Mini Journal of Joy series. Today, very excitingly, we're going to be binding our pages together and turning these into a journal. So the first thing we need to do is make a cover. I'm going to be using some mixed media paper. I've got this pad of Claire Fontaine 250 GSM 115 pound paper. I mentioned at the end of the last video that if you've got something like a cereal box that would work absolutely fine. You just want some form of reasonably thick cardstock but it's also going to be able to fold. Now, in terms of size, you're going to want it to be bigger than the page that you're going to be putting inside it. And I'm usually leaving like a little bit of a gap around the outside so that the cover protects the pages inside. But for now, I'm just going to decorate most of this piece of paper, which will just make it a bit easier for me when I decide to fold it. If you're using a cardboard box, something that's got patterns on it, I would recommend putting down something like a coat of gesso first, so that if you're adding paint or decorative papers, that hopefully that doesn't show through. I'm going to be using acrylic paint and my brayer to decorate my cover, but collage papers, anything that you want to add on top is absolutely fine. I'm going to be using three different colours of acrylic paint to start with. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of these on my page and then just use the brayer to spread it all around. So again, I'm going for colours that bring me joy on this cover. And I may then slightly soften the colours by adding some gesso on top later. We'll see how it looks. So I'm just going to use my brayer to spread this paint all around. I always have some spare bits of paper by the side of me for cleaning off my brayer. These will be great for using in projects at a later date. And I do want to soften those colours just slightly, so I'm going to dry this off and then add some gesso on top. I've got some Dayla Rowney acrylic gesso. And I don't want to add too much because I love those beautiful colours, but I know I'm going to want to add some extra decoration on top, which I'll do once the cover is folded and I can see what's going to be on the front and back and it's trimmed to size. So again, I'm just going to spread this around a little bit. I really like how that's looking. It's brought some interesting patterns and textures to that page. And I think some stenciling will show up a bit better on that now. So I'm gonna now put this to one side to dry so we can start having a look through the pages that we've created. I've counted the amount of pages I've made and I got through 12. So I'm going to decide how many of these I want to use and in what order. And we're going to fold these into either one or more signatures. And so this journal here, I'm hoping you can see as an example, is just one signature folded, all of the papers folded together and sewn directly into the spine of that journal. So it's just got a one crease down the spine. And this journal here has a flat cover. So when I folded it, I've put an extra strengthening strip there. And I've got three different signatures in here. 
which if you've got lots of pieces of paper might very well be a good option for you because it just gives your paper more space especially if you're going to be adding extra layers and writing spots and pockets and things like that on top. I think with only 12, I'll probably get away with it being just one signature. So I want to decide the order I want these in and also which way I want them up. So some of these were similar where I'd done similar backgrounds and patterns. So I want to make sure that they're right, not right next to each other. So I did two of these, there'll be another one somewhere. I did a couple with the black stripes so I just want to make sure that they're nicely separated from each other. And also just thinking then about the order they're going to be in, which one do you want to see first when you open your journal? So it's entirely down to you. And if you've got some pages which are much bigger than others, you can look at whether you want to trim anything down to size. But the first thing I'm going to do for now is start folding these in half. So again, I just want to make sure that I'm doing them in the way up I want them to be in the journal. So I'm just simply folding them in half. If you've got a bone folding tool, that's great because it's just going to help you have a crisper fold on that page. I'm just going to go through and do this one by one until each of these pages are hopefully reasonably neatly folded. Okay, I'm now going to reassemble these in the order I want them in my journal. Again, just checking that I've got each of these in the way up that I want them. I think it's so rewarding when you get to bind this all together. For me, it's also kind of the most nerve wracking part because you don't want to uh, mess it up when you've put all of that hard work into it, but we'll check everything before we do properly bind it. So at this point, you're going to get a feel for how thick your journal is going to be or how thick it's going to be in the beginning, because I'm sure it will grow so as you add photos and other things to it. So if you think yours looks too thick at this stage, you could decide to separate it into two signatures. And also because we're going to be piercing holes through all of these, again, that's another good reason sometimes to separate them. But I think I'm going to stick with mine as it is. So we're now going to start piercing some holes. So to help me with the piercing, I've brought over a piece of paper to use as a template. And so mine's at 13 and a half centimetres. So I'm just going to mark that onto this piece of paper. And we're going to be adding three dots in uh, three holes into this journal. So I want one that's going to be roughly in the middle. So I'm going to be looking for about six and three quarters. So again, I'm just checking it at this stage, checking that that looks roughly right. It doesn't need it to be too precise, but we are going to need to be able to match this up with the cover, which is why I recommend having some a little piece of paper as a template. So I'm just going to mark that that's the edge of where my journal pages are. And then I'm probably going to go down about two centimetres from the top and two centimetres from the bottom. 
and you can choose where you want your holes to be but I always want one roughly in the centre and then fairly near the top and the bottom of the pages to try and help keep them quite secure. And so now we've got this, we can use this to actually make some little marks on where we want our dots to be where we're going to be putting the holes through and we're going to be piercing from the inside but it can be helpful just to have those lines on the outside so when you're pushing the holes through you're checking that you're roughly where you want them so again I'm going to just open it up right to the inside line this edge up there and then mark where we want our holes to be. So I'm now going to clip these pieces of paper in place. And I've got an awl here. If you've got a really sharp needle, that should be fine too. I'm just going to start gently easing this through those holes. And again, I'm hoping it's going to come out at least somewhere near where the lines are on the outside. This can take a little while, so I'd just say go gently and slowly with it because you don't want to rip the pieces of paper. So I'm just moving it round and round. And you can see I've come out here not quite on the spine, so I'm just gonna move it around slightly. So there, I've managed to get it out in the fold now. So if you end up coming slightly off center, just have another go. The little holes won't matter, but it's better for the binding to try and get it through the folded spine if you can. Okay, so I've got a nice big hole there. I'm going to be using ribbon, depending on what kind of thread you want to use will depend on how big you want those holes. So I'm now going to do exactly the same on the other two pencil marks. So once you finish that, you should have three holes coming out, hopefully roughly along that center fold that you can see from the inside and the outside. And now the next thing you can do at this stage, if you want to, and I'm not sure I'm actually going to, I usually do with my journals, but it's actually trim off all of these extra edges here. But because where they folded and they're inside each other, they're not gonna be quite level. I have got my craft knife here. I'm trying to decide whether I want to tidy those up at all. But I think I'm quite happy with that kind of rough look today. If you do want to tidy yours up, I would use something like a metal ruler. Have it along the side here and you'll need to just keep trimming and trimming until you get through all of those pieces of paper and you'll then end up with a really nice flat edge. But I think, so I think I'm quite happy with it being a bit more rough and kind of organic looking today. Because we're going to be sewing soon, again, I would say just have one last quick check that all of the papers are in the direction you want them. That's all looking good to me. And then just clip them back in place and we'll start working on that cover again. You want to make sure your cover is completely dry. And the first thing I'm gonna do just to make it this easier to work with is fold it in half and then I can start deciding what size I want the cover to be. So again, I'm gonna use that bone folding tool. And so I know that this is 13 and a half and I want a reasonable, it doesn't have to be massive. 
I'm probably going to go for one centimeter extra all the way around. It just gives it a nice bit of protection. Then if you want some things kind of slightly hanging out, you can do that. So I've got mine at 15 and a half. So I think I'll do that first cut for the height and then I can work out what width I want it when I've got those, the top strip just removed. And you can do this with scissors or a craft knife. I think I'm going to use scissors this time. You probably will get a slightly neater cut with a craft knife, but my blade's a little bit blunt at the moment, so I'm just going to go for the scissors. Okay, so I've now got that the height I want it. And the width of my pages are about 11 centimetres, so I think I'm going to bring that out to 12. I think that's going to yeah, probably be just about right. Before cutting, I'd always just check that you're happy with how it's looking. And I'm going to cut that off on the front and on the back. And sorry, I should have said if you wanted to put in more signatures, kind of like I showed earlier with that other journal, you need to make sure obviously you've left yourself a wider spine there. And then I'd always recommend having another piece of cardboard, like using a strip like this, just to strengthen that in the middle as well. Okay, so hopefully we've now got a cover, which is going to nicely cover the pages inside. And we now want to make some holes on here. We know that this is the edge of our pages, our journal. So we're gonna want this center point to be the center of here. So I'm going to want this on mine at about seven and three quarters. So if we match that up here, again, match that hole up, just check it's looking about right. And again, I'm going to measure in the inside as well. So I just hold it up quite a few times and I can see I've got that a little bit high. So I'm just going to move some of those dots just along. In fact, I think they're I'm just going to put some X's there just to help me, just to try and make sure that I've got it reasonably even gap all around the outside. And now that I've got those, 
I'm going to again just pierce my hole and it's much easier when you're just doing it with one piece of card. Okay, so it's now time to get whatever you want to bind your journal together with. For binding mine together, I'm going to use some of this beautiful multicoloured ribbon. Embroidery thread, string, twine, anything will be fine. Um, if you're using a thin thread, you might want to do a few stitches, whereas this ribbon should hopefully be strong enough to hold everything in place. And I'm going to use quite a bit because I'm thinking I might possibly add some beads on the bottom. I'm not sure yet. But better to have more than you think you're going to need than not enough. And then I'm going to thread this ribbon into probably into one of the bigger needles that I've got. And I have got one of these little needle threading tools, which definitely helps if you're using something thicker like ribbon. And I bought a little book binding kit, I think from Amazon a few years ago now, and that had the thick needles, the awl and plenty of wax thread in there as well, which is really good if you're wanting to do nice thick journals. So you want to start on the inside in the centre hole and push your needle all the way up and through the hole that you've created. So that's come out nicely there. And then we're going to put that through the centre hole in the cover as well. And now you want to pull this all the way through until you've got a nice long tail at the bottom. So I'm going to leave mine so quite long and dangly for now. And now we're going to go to one of the holes, top or bottom, doesn't matter. And we're going to go back in from the outside. And I always think, find this more difficult. In fact, that's come through much more easily today. But I went through the cover first and then found the hole from the pages. So you now want to pull this needle through and it's worth keeping hold of this centre one just to make sure that you don't pull it all the way through. So pull it until it's nice and flat on that outside. But I've kept this one kind of in your hand so it doesn't pull it through. We're now going to go back through that centre hole again. Again, you might need to just separate your pages ever so slightly from your cover, just so that you can see a little bit better where your needle is going. And it's definitely more challenging. This is the first time I've done it with ribbon because I'm trying not to pierce through the actual ribbon itself. Okay, we're through. Again, just try and keep hold of that very first kind of dangly bit that you've got. Pull that needle through. And you might want to just adjust things a little bit. Just pull everything tight so that you've got nice tight binding on the outside of your journal. And now you want to go back inside through the hole that you've not yet been through. So again, I'm going to just push that through the cover and then find the holes on the inside of the paper. And then pull that through again until it's nice and tight on the outside. So you should have those stitches showing there. And you would just repeat this twice if you're putting two signatures in. Okay, the next thing to do is tie these together. And I always do a double knot. Try and press it down firmly. So 
So I'm pulling these out, but I'm going to get, once we're starting to get close, again, I just want to make sure that first knot's kind of tight as it can be, put my finger down on it, and then start continuing to pull these other two. And it doesn't have to be really, really tight, but the tighter you can get it, the less your pages are going to move around. Okay, I'm really happy with that. So we can now remove the clips and our pages should be nicely bound into our journal. And now at this stage, you can either just clip these off or you might want them a little bit longer so they're hanging down from the journal. That's entirely up to you. Or you could decide to add some beads. And I think I might. I've got some little beads here from Etsy. So I'm just going to have a quick look through these and pick a couple that I think will tie in nicely with the bright colours of this journal. So I've picked four beads. And I've had to change needle because I've just checked and the needle that I was using originally won't go through these beads. So I've had to make sure I've got a needle that will pass through it for when I'm putting the ribbon through. So I'm going to start with one of the strands and I'm going to tie a little knot just above where I want that first bead to go. And I want the bead to be hanging below the journal so that it doesn't interfere with the pages at all. Just gives me a bit of a guide. And so I'm now going to thread the ribbon back through the needle. I'm using that smaller needle this time, so it's more challenging to pull the ribbon through, but we're there. So I'm now going to put that needle through the first bead and pull this up to where I want it. And then I'm going to add my second bead. I can see there's some quite a lot of dust inside of these beads, but that's fine. Okay, and now I'm going to tie a couple of knots underneath to make sure that the beads can't slide off the ribbon. Okay, so I'm checking, I'm happy, they're nice and secure. And I'm going to do exactly the same now with these two beads on this strand, but I'll probably hang them just at a slightly different point. Then once you're happy with the length of those, you can just trim off a little bit of your cords at the bottom there. So I just think they look really pretty underneath. So you could now just leave your journal as it is, but there's just a few things I want to do. 
Something I'm not probably going to do to this one, but I thought I'd mention is you can get little book corners if you like. I think, again, I got these off Amazon, brass book corners, and I have used those on my junk journal that I'm using at the moment. It's kind of quite a nice touch. I just put some strong glue in those and press them on. I'll see how I feel. I might be something I add at a later date. But I want to add some extra decoration to the front of the outside cover. And I'm trying to decide whether I want to add anything on the inside. I'm just going to have a quick look at some papers. So I've got my paper pad from my product range, but obviously any kind of papers would be fine if you decide you do want to add some extra decoration just sort of on that inside cover. So I'm thinking I might simply just glue those on and then cut around the outside. And I might have something different then on the back. So I'm going to use some Pritt stick for this. I'm just going to put that all over here. It will strengthen up the cover slightly and obviously just gives it a slightly more finished look. And one thing I'd recommend is if your cover's slightly bending like mine is at the moment, is perhaps just put it under some heavy books or something overnight. So that's probably what I'll do when I finish mine, is just to kind of press it flat a little bit. So I'm just putting that in place. Smoothing it down and I'll now cut around the edges and do the same for the back cover as well. Okay, so that's the front and back, just tidied up a little bit and so it just gives it a bit more strength to that cover as well. And now I just want to add some final decoration on the front. So then I'm just gonna kind of lie it flat because I'd like to do some stenciling. For my stenciling, I'm going to use Tulip Triumph from my product range. So it was a Happen to be a nice size for this journal. And I'm going to use some black acrylic paint and apply it with a makeup sponge. But you know, deck, please feel free to decorate the fronts of your covers in absolutely any way you like. I'm just dabbing off most of the paint. I'm just going to take a quick minute just to apply this through the stencil. Okay, I'm now going to gently peel this back. I'm not worried if it's not perfect. Just want a little bit of extra decoration on there. Okay, I really like how that's looking. I'm just going to dry that off quickly. Okay, so that is our mini journal of joy now all bound and complete. I'm just thrilled with mine. I really hope you're happy with yours and you've enjoyed journey, uh, joining me on this adventure. I will be back and do another part next week because I thought it might be fun to give you some ideas for how you can now use this journal, how I'm going to be adding writing spots to mine and just some little thoughts on what I want to put inside my journal. But most importantly, I just hope you've had lots of fun creating this and you're happy with how your journal is looking. As always, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. 
Well, I hope you're doing really well. Thank you ever so much for being here. I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.